Call the roll. All right, Councilman Beal. Here. Councilwoman Bettina. Here. Councilman Phillips. Here. Councilman Casella. There. Supervisor Thurston. Here. Everyone, please rise. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. We have our workshop today. But before we start, Mr. Beal, would you like to give a moment of silence or something? Today is National Police Memorial Day yeah. itself. Maybe you would like to say something. Sure. Um, obviously, uh, police officers uh, have been uh, facing uh, uh, unprecedented challenges, especially over the last year. Uh, my wife is a sergeant in the town of Poughkeepsie Police Department. Uh, my father-in-law is a retired Dutchess County Sheriff's Office sergeant. And uh, today, as uh, the nation pauses to remember those that we've lost, I think we should stand for a moment of silence and remember those that have uh, given the ultimate sacrifice uh, in law enforcement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. So today I asked uh, Tim uh, of CPL to move CPL to just prepare some general overviews of some of the projects we've been talking. You know, we're not limited to those, but I thought that information covers, you know, at least the key ones and uh, some of the work that's also been ongoing. So, Tim, why don't you run it, th run us through it, and then we'll open it up for discussion on them. Of course, anybody has a question while he's presenting, please raise it to Tim. Sure. So, uh, we've been talking about uh, midpoint. And, and Tim's tan because he's been out at Robinson Field surveying inch by inch the field diameters, which he's going to talk about. I heard about he put the rubber down on the infield. I don't know. I was watching the other <laughs> He was also sitting at uh, Dutchess Stadium enjoying a Renegades game, too. Yeah, I can't get right. away with <laughs> Just saying. No cameras on you. Don't worry about it. Uh, okay, so we've all been talking about Midpoint Park Sewer with a notice of violation, and it's on our, our list that we're going to have to address. Um, the original thought process, and it's still out there, but not final, was to run a line to connect to Tri-Muni. Oh, uh, microphone. Oh, pick up the mic. Uh, so one of the concepts was to connect to Tri-Muni. Uh, however, of late, there was uh, a new concept to basically run a new transmission line down uh, Route 378 to uh, East Fishkill. And there's basically a uh, concept where uh, we could do a joint EDA grant with the town of East Fishkill. Uh, we started working on that. Um, I'm trying to find a better concept that shows the whole thing here. But uh, basically, uh, the, the inception was to run the sewer all the way up to the airport area. Uh, let me see here. Hang on. There's a lot of different... A lot of different possibilities. But you know we're looking at this EDA grant application. It'll be a multiple uh, approach to uh, getting DEC uh, funding through the CWSRF as well as the EDA and whatever possible uh, commercial applications that could be. And also potentially more the additional infrastructure funding. You know the whatever that comes State, out with. Right. You know that comes through the feds <laughs> to the state to the yep. county to us whatever it is. So, I mean, this is a work in progress. Uh, it's a lot of it's driven by the number of, of jobs that can be kind of justified. And this isn't it either, sorry. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time, but um, it's impossible. So, we have any idea of what the potential expense with this would be? I know that, you know, we're still working on grants, and as Dick said, you know, there's some money coming in from the infrastructure program from the federal government down to the state, but do we have any idea what the, the cost would There's be? There's a lot of numbers floating around right now. I think we were at like 50 million yeah. when we, that was all in, including the improvements right. in, in East Fishkill. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there'd certainly be a cost share on their side, but you know, the intent was here's the airport service area to go up airport drive, come down along, pick up midpoint, and then go down 376 and then tie in over in the hamlet. Um, but that whole section, that whole cost, like I say, will be broken up. Cost share with East Fishkill, cost share with Wappinger. Uh, the intent would be DEC, CWSRF funding that would take care of the violation for midpoint, and then the EDA grant could kick in right. for 
the extension to the airport. And we're looking at uh, roughly, you know, this is a very rough estimate here for new jobs, uh, both uh, East Fishkill and us, particularly if we include Airport Drive and then 376, uh, approximately 1,000 new jobs, which the EDA is very interested in, probably equally split between the two communities. If this concept were to go, which is, you know, really, sh you know, starting from Airport Drive, shooting, you know, taking the line all the way through and then coming down 376, going across 376 uh, after connecting with Midpoint into East Fishkill and then into, you know, their plant. One, one of the other options is not just the uh, Hopewell Junction plant facilities, which Jim can, you know, talk about, but perhaps taking it down to uh, the uh, much larger capacity uh, at uh, and the old IBM, you know, plant, you know, which East Fishkill has, you know, rights to, I think, uh, about three million gallons or more, you know, that they have rights to. That would add expense, but make it perhaps easier, assuming they could get, a, a, we could, you know, approval to take it down the uh, utility lines, right. uh, Central Hudson and whoever has those particular lines. So, looking at several concepts, but we have had, uh, a good discussion with both state and federal EDA, uh, and you know there's uh, an interest in that. You know the way they work, they have several different arrangements, but effectively we have to line up other funding and expenses with the two municipalities first, and show them that we have that before they commit to their matching. You know of that. So you know that's uh, you know what uh, I think the overview is. Uh, Tim had run numbers before, you know, if we just took midpoint down you know, into Tri-Muni, it's almost the same expense, it's certainly for the town, the same expense without really much opportunity for the grant money, especially right. at the federal level. And I think the other, going to Tri-Muni would be more on force me and wouldn't really allow for additional connections, yeah. whereas this route may allow for additional connections, additional users that would help offset. So what was the cost? Somewhere was around 10 to 15 million if you just did try um, midpoint to try me. Right, that's that, and it's made around 13. Okay. Are I know they're 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 fluid. I get it. Yeah. But you know, as you said, we couldn't connect to others, and you know, I I think one of uh, the the things that we'll discuss maybe a little bit tonight, but I think certainly going in the future is the whole airport drive. You know. You know, there's a lot of land there. Of course, Hudson Valley Lighting, our li largest private, uh, you know, company in the town, is expanding and sewer and you know, water they have through the county, you know, line that goes through there. But there is no sewer, and as we all know, there's a lot of other properties up in that area, <laughs> including especially along Airport Drive, that we have interest in in the sewer as well. So, um, and to, to even with or without going midpoint to Trimuni, there's still a requirement for capital improvements at Trimuni. Yeah. You know, they keep they're they're trying to get re-engaged in funding, but I think that was about a nine million dollar project. All At least. So <laughs> this well, that was nine million. That is of three people. years ago. <laughs> yeah, three years. Ago. So this thirteen uh, fifteen million you're talking about from midpoint to try is just that particular piece. Then there's another yeah, the call line. it nine million dollars worth of improvements to the well, tri-muni yeah, system, yeah, so it's in addition. Plan, but it's not the entire yeah. town. <coughs> yeah, and, and remember, that, and you know, we're 50%. And that's not even to expand the plan. Yeah, right. right. That's right. So we're like four or five <laughs> million. That's to maintain the I got capacity. capacity. Yeah. So, so we're looking at something between probably 15 to 20 million if yeah, you did that, everything. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I mean, it's kind of split yeah. like yeah. either way. Is the plan at IBM run solely by East Fishco? I don't know how all the I, I think it's still run by uh, the uh, I Park complex. East Fishkill has rights to it. I, I'm not right. sure if, you know, whether Angela or Al know, but also on semiconductor, you know, Global mm -hmm. Foundries, that they have certain rights to it. So, right. But yeah, I think you know what what Nick told me is that there's about three million gallons that they they East Fishkill have rights to right. you know, at this point. Now they do have excess capacity yeah. down there, so we yeah. can tap into that if right. possible. Well, the other thing is you have at Amazon going in there also. Right. They will have rights to that. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at you know further you know developing that, and that has uh, possible upsides. So even uh, you know further you know if we did something intermunicipal with 
with East Fishkill, there is that also additional possibility of looking at the southern half of the town, you know, which only has a small <coughs> amount of sewer that runs through Fishkill, right. that then there's a shorter hop over to, you know, east, uh, you know, fish, uh, to the IBM plant. So anyway, uh, but that, this part of it right now, we're looking at the several options and the engineers and, and uh, you know, myself, Nick, and, and uh, there's, I think uh, the lawyers as well have been involved in looking at this. So. We're trying to get ahead of it so when other federal funding opens up, then we'll, and also state funding, as we're starting right. to see, and yeah, see we'll hear a little bit more about that. Is there a timetable when this has to be complete by us? Three, five years? What, what's the timetable we're looking at here? We haven't got that far to the okay. timetable. Um, the, the EDA grant, uh, from our understanding, is sort of like a first come, first serve, you know, to get in line. Um, and you know, first come, first serve, we need the connection point to midpoint first, right? Because right. we're going to be extending. But as to DEC, is, you know, what's their timetable? generally, they want to see it done in two to three years. Okay. You know I mean, but it's, it's, it's a process. As we can go into just a quick overview with Wildwood right. and Woodhill Green. We've been talking about that for the past two years. Our designs are in waiting for final approval. Uh, we had a discussion with EFC, and they're probably looking to close on the financing in September of this year. So, um, you know, yeah. based on the level of our discussions and how long you see how long it takes just to get the project yeah. off the ground. Years. But then once once that happens, you know, you're looking at a one one year construction time. So, it, you know, the good thing is that we've maintained continuous dialogue with the DEC, so as to. Diffuse, you know, they're working with us. I should say on on these situations because they know, you know, what what's involved in it. So that's at least we're communicating regularly with them. You know, sure. we have good dialogue, Thanks. and so they know that we're moving in that direction. You know, to get these things done, and then they haven't yet really raised you know, Fleetwood, which is another issue, but maybe related to sewer and water going down nine. Right. Ultimately, we'll talk about. That. So go ahead. So then, I mean, that's really it on Wildwood. It's, it's moving forward. We still need to now on Royal Ridge. On Royal Ridge, right? But we still need to engage Woodhill Green. Right. You know, everybody's yeah. aware of that, um, and that that's kind of on. on yeah, and right. with Jim, so we finalized what the uh, presentation would be on costs and how we're structuring user, user costs. rates. Yeah, Jim's been trying to find out. They've yeah, had have changes in the management but, company. Yeah. So. so. You know, he's been <laughs> trying to get a handle on that. So, I mean, you know, it, um, with respect to um, buy-in fees for them, because of the nature, we probably lock it into those, have those paid over time, yeah. not as an upfront cost. Um, and then, um, you know, we just have to uh, see, you know, regarding, you know, ultimately they have to vote as to whether or not they're going to, they even want to connect, right? Right. So, because the the easements and everything we would need are through the common areas of the, the condominium. So, they have to. Unfortunately, they have to vote as a board. Right. I mean, they. they I know they were. You know, right. Mayor Matt Alexander is pushing, looking at another option, which Mike Tremper and I kind of felt was a snake oil salesman option, which was these large tanks with carbon, you know, filters in it. You know, the you know, upfront cost is not as great as the ultimate repair and maintenance, and it's not really been tested that well. You know, so uh, uh, I will present this option to them. I know they're quite interested, and they keep inquiring because when Tim, what, they were doing some surveying, people would see them out there uh, and asking right, us yeah, when yeah. it's coming. You know, so the main thing now is to get, you know, the management company to have a discussion. Just like we've been doing, you know, we've been having good discussions, and Tim, it's not on the agenda, but maybe you can update, uh, you know, what we've been doing out at Pavilion, you know, with Mike Tremper, and, you know, there, as you'll recall, one of our major, the major issue was I&I. &I. They have, the privately, you know, they connect into our line, and one, as Jim can also, and Tim, you know, can further say, you know, they... One of the issues at Tri-Muni is, of course, getting I&I &I better under control. It's not just us, but it's the, the village in, in Poughkeepsie.
but this goes a long way. Maybe while I'm talking about Tim, why don't you just summarize what right. we've so done we've, recently with Travis and them? We've had a couple meetings. It's taken some time for them to secure a contractor, which they do have one now. And we've had a pre-construction meeting to go over you know, the findings of the investigation. Uh, they have a set of plans uh, basically to go in. There's several sections of pipe that need spot repair. They're going to seal up manholes and basically finally address all the loose ends that have been pointed out over the past couple years. That's decades. Uh, decades. <laughs> it's only been a couple years for me. <laughs> yeah, uh, me too. <laughs> uh, so they're, they keep saying they're going to start within the next week or two. So we would hope that by the end of the summer that is done. And then, uh, we're going to have, between Mike Tremper's crew and CPL, we'll have spot inspections out there to see how progress is going. And the Can we measure is, before and after? Well, I was going to say the good thing is there is a meter on the pump station. So okay. we'll have real-time data uh, okay. both from historic and then after. So that will be a good, right. good exercise there. But they, they, they have been very, very cooperative you know, with us. Um, it's just the delay of getting their condominium association, whatever it is, you know, aligned. And as Tim said, finding the contractor. But there has been you know, good uh, cooperation there. Uh, Francina Amparo has been extremely helpful in pushing out on since she lives there and has a good interest in uh, getting this, you know, helping the town in that, so. I want to jump down now to CFAs, which is a consolidated funding application, and that's where the New York State Grant Program opens up. Historically, it would open up in March, and I think applications are due by July-ish. And then by December, you know if you've been awarded projects. So uh, they, they totally shut down the program last year because of COVID. Uh, there's talk that this year they may double the funding since they didn't appropriate anything last year. And the good news is this past week they opened the door. So um, one of the things that we had applied for was through the local waterfront revitalization program. Unfortunately, I don't have like a clear diagram of what we were talking about, but basically we, we mentioned this previously, we had talked about the Chelsea boat ramp area, uh, you know, improving maybe along the Wappinger Creek, some access points. Um, Dick, what were some of the, were those the two main? Yeah, well, areas? up to Reese, Reese Park, to Reese you know, Park. and, you know, we still have, you know, to determine, you know, what is, you know, I think Bill can tell everyone better uh, than uh, I think the rest of us, but there was an arrangement with the village on the boathouse and actually we, you know, by board resolution approved that and also that's what helped them get the funding with the town in there. They're, they've now completed renovation. I had tried previously to get us involved in you know, the, the resolutions, you know, consider, and Jim probably has a better idea, uh, you know, town of Poughkeepsie, us and the village having involvement with that boathouse. Uh, so that was really our extent and was coming from basically the boathouse and that look at or across from Reese Park, uh, you know, f for, you know, a ramp for kayaking, boating, going down the creek. You know, I've discussed with Alex Reese and he owns much of that land and the piers, but to get that retrofitted, all this is going to be contingent on getting EPA, you know, the EPA finalizing their plans for the dredging, but they've completed, uh, I'm waiting for results, but they've completed their surveys, you know, for the, the hot spots and what they need to do along the lower creek, you know, up up through the bleachery right. area. So they're, they're, they're pushing that now, you know, which is good news. So it basically extended, you know, what we did, and that grant was, what, 200 and some thousand dollars yeah, that we put in. Yeah. And we, we just missed it, you know, they, they go through these checklists, and I think we've, we are, we have, and we've, we have done and we're doing some other things that would actually further strengthen the checklist if they are completed. Right. And that, that grant was for like a comprehensive right. study. study. Right. right. But there are other grant monies to right. do specific actions. So that's, I think, we're during one of the next two board meetings and we'll mm -hmm. discuss more about that. But it looks like a good opportunity. And, and also I've been you know, communicating with uh, this group, you know, Hudson River, you know, Watershed Alliance, and they, they are involved to some degree with respect to, uh, and they do uh, all various creeks, 
Uh, they've been involved with the upper Wappinger Creek, but also they're very interested in looking at it with us here and also the Sprout Creek, you know, and going for some funding with respect to a study on the Sprout Creek like they did in Wappinger. And, and the idea there would be, you know, to really clean up the area, make it more useful from Robinson, you know, down, you know, to uh, almost to, uh, you know, Old Hopewell Road area, but at least you know, as to, you know, the uh, Rockingham Park area. The other uh, area we should look at is adjacent to Old Troy Road, that section where mm -hmm. the old bridge used to be. Right. It's owned by the county, that property. Um, they, they blocked it off finally because people started thumping yeah. again down yeah. there. But um, that's a natural uh, location for kayak entry yep. uh, and yep. a parking lot, um, and it's a county parcel. For, uh, further down. No, it's right, it's right, that, it's right, right there. there. Yeah, right, right, right there. there. So uh, it actually exits out onto Old Troy. Yep. Troy. Right. But that's another opportunity right there. Yep. I, I mean, going back years ago, I remember discussing this with Roger Higgins when he was a legislator, and uh, you know that was uh, uh, a different time, obviously, at that point. But it, if we have grant funding available to look at that yeah. work, uh, uh, you know, with the county, uh, we could potentially develop a uh, pocket park there or park pocket parking lot there because yeah. you basically all you need is just an access point to throw your kayak in. Right. It comes down to basically comes down to to sea level. You know? Yeah. So that right there is something we should keep on the radar. And if you take you know just on the other side of the bridge across the creek. You know, uh, you know, on I'm on our side. You know, all that land going, yeah, all that there. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I was talking about. That's that Alex right. has. He wants to, if we are proceeding or get some grant funding, he wants to create a, a friends of Reese Park in that area. But also, you'll recall there are old wooden, you know, piers that yeah. go out right. there. Yeah. You know, those are apparently his, you know, or his family's, and because of the way the uh, Army Corps everything works, we can just or with him can rebuild those and put them in docks because it's already a pre-existing you know, structure. And, you yeah. know, so he's, he's quite excited about that in the Reese Park and then we can interconnect all that probably. Uh, what we had proposed in the old grant application was also cleaning up some that uh, Reese Park, you know, the driveway, the parking area, all that is in a state of disrepair. You know, so that, that would be helpful uh, and along the creek. The, uh, one other aspect of this uh, that could be included, Tim, I don't know if I discussed it with you, but uh, our Randolph School, uh, they, uh, you know, just down at the end of Middlebush, right? private school, they have a special creeks initiative, you know, because the Hunter Creek right. it runs right behind them, and so they're interested in working with the town, you know, cooperatively on aspects of the Hunter Creek, of course, a lot of that land on the west side is also the Reese family, yeah. right. you know, land. Yeah. <laughs> so I think Al Alex is very interested in, in working with us proactively. So I think this now provides us a good opportunity to at least get study monies and then hopefully as we have some specific projects along there, you know, including down in Chelsea, right. you know, put in for some other grant money as well. So I just pulled up the uh, uh, New York State Department of State um, uh, handout regarding the LWRP portion of the CFA application and it says the department is making available approximately 27.7 uh, million dollars uh, for the for LWRP programs I think last year it was four or five it is minimal. yeah it was, very minimal. It was not yeah. a lot of money and then they yeah. suspended it actually so. yeah. Or two years ago, I should say. Because yeah, so we were going to, yeah, we put in the application two years ago, and then last was, year they suspended. You know, the cap was, the cap was right. I believe, 285000 yeah, you know, or, or two fifty. I mean, yeah, we put it in at the cap. I think two fifty was. Well, the cap now is $15 million. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, we, we want to move, you know. Or, uh, no, wait. Uh, I'll find it. You know, proactively and uh, Somewhat aggressively. But Scott almost. Williams, the grant writer, right. mm -hmm. he also put in for a DEC grant for uh, Chelsea. Good. So yeah, I don't think that was a whole lot, but it was no, maybe, it's maybe enough to cover. A but it's something. Yeah. yeah. So we can build up on on these, and so I think over the next few months we'll be yeah. pushing this aggressively. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead, Tim. All right. So then, uh, you know, we've been having talks with Munistat and. I use the reference 
offensive defensive projects, but an offensive project is something. Munis, that's our financial advisors. That I would say, you know, your town can survive without it, but it's something good to have as like a future uh, viability. So um, we are talking about Route 9 water uh, and coming up with some affordable concepts to do it maybe in phases because I think the sewer was 30 million and the water was maybe. 13 to 20 million. Right. So um, we've tried to break it up into what would be a rational phases to build, like I call them ladder rungs, where maybe the first extension gets put in and then the second. Um, so you know we're working on the on the pricing of this. It's in the overall uh, budget analysis for Munistat for phase, but you know basically we try to break it up with the water here. And then, you know, with a little bit longer term perspective, looking at Fleetwood, which is the yellow right. uh, that's area. Right, in here. So that, again, we've been told by DEC that's on the radar for a notice of violation as another kind of outdated wastewater treatment facility. So uh, this is all water on this map, but it's a parallel concept yeah. to sewer. Water's okay right now, Mike said, you know, as far as quality is concerned, but it's the sewer. Yeah, the water's coming in from Fishkill on that. Is it? Yeah, so we're we're okay on that part. Yeah, you know, now at the uh, planning board meeting, recent planning board meeting, uh, what was it, CarMax? You know, they were, you yes. know that they said that you know on the record they would pay for water and sewer to their site. So yeah, I had to rewind it. <laughs> I know, I couldn't believe it either. I, believe I just that. happened to be watching the meeting at my yeah. house. You know, just had it on in the background, and I thought they said that while I was in yes. the kitchen. So I stopped it and rewound it. And then I texted Bruce Flower. I said, did they say they want to run water and sewer to their parcel? He said, they did. Now that is value. So you know, that's they, the old Plant Depot property. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. I don't like the idea of another parking lot, but. I but don't, I don't <laughs> either, but you know what? Right. I wasn't really too fond of the CarMax concept until he said that. Because that, you got to look at the overall benefit. Oh, yeah. right. so they're going to run water from, yeah. where is it, McFarland down to? Yes. Uh, Basically down to CarMax, they're coming from the other side, right? They got to come from the opposite yeah, side. Yeah, right. Exactly. Well, they would come from. Yeah, they would probably run it on the west on the west side, I would guess, right? Well, if they're coming from the west, they're going to pick it up from uh, from. Uh, Fowler House. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's further up, right? It's further yeah. up. So that's, that's Fowler House. Well, that's that's even better. If they run it down the west side, right, to to their parcel. We already have it on the east side, which can be extended yeah. to. I mean, you could always bore, right? Right. I mean, that's right. It would be beneficial to the people in Osborne. It would be huge. Then we could look at lateral. Yeah. And Osborne Hill Road. Yeah, it would That would be able to be connected to Fishkill, I believe, up on Osborne Hill you Road. Could bring, you could bring that. Because right where the line and, is. And we, we've been talking with Fishkill about actually going further down right. into it because, you know, we have the water park, you know, splashdown that needs water desperately. They bring right. it in every day. And Fishkill has a couple of big parcels, you know, 40 acre parcels that want water and sewer. But eventually, and so we bring if it, it can benefit yeah. the residents that are that's there, right. Oh yeah, that, I mean, all that's the way up idea. Osborne yeah. and possibly looking towards the future, right. Baxter Town over to Chelsea. Yeah. Well, there is a water line that runs down don't, Baxter don't, Town, yeah, yeah, no, which we well, talked about. Well, I know. Sort of. It's, sort of. it's right. just like it's, a garden hose. No, you know, that well, is. But, but Fishkill, they are very interested in us working with them on that because they don't like that is the, very, very they don't like arrangement and also all it does is dumps into the water tower yes. so it's not circular and they have problems with chlorine and various right. other things and it doesn't you know, so it does not no. serve right. the residents no there. it does not serve i fought a fire about two months ago on baxter town road did okay, you even have water with a fire hydrant right in front of it that could not be used right. because those hydrants are yeah. locked. Yeah. And I, yeah. I got a major problem with that. Yeah. I totally to, agree with you. They come through the town of Wabadra. I understand it's a private water line right. that's between the village of Fishkill and Chelsea Ridge Apartments. But again, uh, I, I, and I said this when this was going on previously, the town needs to have a conversation and see if we can yeah. have access for emergency purposes. Well, to problem those is it's not fire rated. No, yeah, it's, it's not. not. Fire yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. And I've got and, fire. And I've had that and actually they've agreed that we can, but the, you know, they, they'd like to upgrade it because it also doesn't help them with their... I've got three partials that I have fire yeah. hydrants on right. and they're worthless. No, I know. 
That's a good point. If they're not rated hydrants, then it's another, it's another hole. Uh, yeah, exactly. just, still, as I understand it, Jim, it was just really for cleaning or trying to get flushing access out. to flushing, flushing out. Right, that's all it was. For that purpose. existing pipe, not but, for fire. But the good thing is you're going to get water down there if they're going to put it in. That'll help down the Route 9 corridor, too. And yeah, you'll I've be able to bring other but businesses. Unfortunately, Bill, uh, uh, unfortunately, Al, I totally respect that, but I've heard that before. Well, when I see it and I get Angela, it, I'll I think, be thrilled. I think this I think board, we're, we're closer, taking a much favor. more proactive Approach. I <laughs> say a prayer every day. Well, well, the other issue too is if the federal funding comes through. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's what we're. I mean, just, it would just make everybody a, very right. happy. Yeah, exactly. We haven't had those opportunities to, no. since the 70s. A right. similar pet peeve that I had, <coughs> uh, which I'll Sorry. just give you 30 seconds of, is Michael Drive and Peter Drive in the town of Wappinger mm -hmm. with with hydrants in front of the largest houses in the town, mm -hmm. up on top of that hill. You see, yeah, right. nine mm -hmm. right. that are non-fire rated hydrants that are for flushing purposes only all the way on top of that hill, yep. okay? And there's a pump station that needs to be manually turned on at the bottom of Eck Road in Old Hopewell. Uh, however, these were built to like 1960s standards yeah. and um, you know, you buy a house with a fire hydrant in the front yard, you think that it's gonna, yeah. be, uh, it's gonna be beneficial. So we're not gonna solve that issue right now, but- On the radar. We it's something it. that yeah, if I we're agree. gonna be expanding water, we also need to understand that folks that have been paying into the water district for the last 30 years, may not get a full benefit of a new person that gets a new water line that has a rated hydrant. Right. So just just a point, that's all. My 30 well, seconds is up. But, well, but I, think, but I, but I, agree with I think, you. Bill, you know, along with that, you know, we talked at the previous meeting and we've discussed the consultants meeting of looking at this jigsaw puzzle, understanding where there is current lack of service. And I think your input there about the fire rated or lack of it, hydrants, I think, Tim, you know, we need to be looking at that on that map. And we have John Laz as, He's putting it together. This is a very important you know, point of it. So I think we'll cover that, you know, in the not too distant future once that map gets done. And also from a safety perspective, oh, right? I, I, Absolutely. I mean, that's clearly. Well, I mean, there's a number of areas in the county where that's an issue. I yeah. yeah. Up it's, in it's, Hyde Park. It's actually very scary. Well, it, it, yeah. It, it, it really it's is. It's also, I mean, one of the things, particularly if you're going to, you know, be extending water systems, you know, it would be a critical issue out on Airport Drive um, because of the larger buildings and the yeah. sprinkler requirements. Yeah. That's so, true. But, you know, which which are not that far from the rail trail. Right. right. No, that's right. 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 Which has a water but line. The right. other yeah, thing to right. remember, Jim's working, and hopefully we'll get it finalized, you know, real soon, is on the easement at Skytop, right? You know, and the idea there, you know, Angela, is, you know, the water goes up to the top. You know, the property owner, which is now connected, getting easement across. And then, you know, if... Uh, Mr. Zagorin develops the property right next to, you know, uh, Chelsea Ridge, he will pay for a water pipe connection going up to basically Route 9D. So that then starts to expand the potential for circular and, you know, getting something with East Fish, with Fishkill, which they're interested in doing, actually. They, they'd rather have a, a water from the town in that area and then also an interconnect, like we've talked with the village, for backup and safety and fire and those things. So that's something in the works, but you know, Jim's working on getting the uh, easement done so then at least we have the possibility of putting circular and then cutting across, I think, to Thorn Acres to Booth Boulevard, Angela. You yeah, know, so would no, be, it has to go all the way down. Yeah, so we don't have to go all the way down there, right? So that, that's something that. The last thing I want to just say, though, while we're on this topic of fire suppression and safety, again, uh, I would like to see some sort of a solution developed to get a fire hydrant from the back of tall trees up on top of Montclair townhouses. And I understand that uh, you know, <coughs> it's a situation where we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to look at uh, the legalities of it, but we do own the property that's at the oh, top yeah, of sure. that hill. Mm -hmm. What's that? No, I, I, you know, I think that's regardless of what they do. Yeah, right, regardless of what they do. This is not for drinking water, no. right. this is for uh, you know, you have large apartment buildings up there. There are fire hydrants up there. There are non-fire rated hydrants. It's right. at very high elevation. Uh, and for safety purposes, if we have the ability to get water up to the top of that hill, uh, it's something that we should explore. Yeah. So I think, Tim, you know, looking at what pressure we need and do we need another little pump station or something to get it up there. You know, I mean, before it was working to get to the water tower, but I don't know if it's enough pressure. Yeah, it wouldn't be you know, it's not enough for the fire system, but with that we can address. Well, I mean, one of the one of the issues was I think is it, I think there's a pressure reducing valve going into tall trees. Yeah, right at that pit, there's a big concrete right, because they have a huge because right. the infrastructure reducing. the infrastructure in there is from the, is yeah. old infrastructure. So right. the water that's coming off the New York City DEP line 
you know, you're getting close to 100 pounds on, on right. that. So it had to be reduced to get into the uh, right. existing infrastructure. So I don't want to talk too deeply into this, right. but it might be, we may have to run a separate pipe. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. the existing pipes probably can't take You may have the pressure, pressure to get up because it's so much coming off that line. Right. But the right. point is, you know, since we're talking about 30,000 foot projects here, something that I think uh, before we have a catastrophe right. up there, uh, yeah. we should at least have some sort of a solution yeah. developed. Do we have enough capacity if we do all these extensions from a well point of view? Yes. We do. According to Mike Tripper, for okay. what we've been talking about, yes. Great. If we were to fill out the whole town, maybe not, but mm -hmm. then, you know, based on what additional reserves we have, then that's where the DEP, you know, arrangement comes in because we have the contractual right, we just have to negotiate with them on the, the terms such as pricing. <laughs> But it's not we do have that ability. Right. Yeah. It's not going to be cheap. In those no. discussions, which happened over a decade ago, uh, the irony was the fact that 51% of New York City's water runs under the part of our town that has no water. Yeah. That was the irony. Exactly. Yes. Okay? And there's reasons why that occurred, and you can read back in 1938, the Water Supply Act. Right. Uh, but. They were willing to have this conversation with the town of Wappinger only because we were willing to have the conversation about providing them water. So there are a number of options within the, the negotiation where we could, from an emergency pretense, get water from them yeah. if we need to. However, if you look at town of Newburgh and some of those other municipalities that had to take water out of, I think one of them, I think city of, the city of Newburgh currently taking water out of there? No, uh, it's the town. The town yeah. is. The town does regularly, but due to the, the situation going on in the city of Newburgh with water contamination, oh, yeah, then they, they, they might be getting it. And I think the state's paying for it. If you look at the rate, it's pretty significant. So it wouldn't be, in my opinion, something that we would be doing to sustain our system, no. I think from an emergency right. standpoint, it would be a good uh, redundancy right. uh, to have in place. And we just have to you know, focus on what we want to do. We've been waiting for the, the water supply at Hilltop to get finalized. It's, Jim, how close are we? We're very close to getting that Two last well in line. Wells are approved and the third one is close. So yeah, so once idea. that's done, then we know exactly what our capacity is, which sure. is, you know, is a very, very good, you know. but. That's where we want it for our town use in these projects and sure. expansion. So, but if we have some other interconnects, you know, with East Fishkill and Fishkill, then there's unlimited potential, I think, in the region. So, and I think Mike, in his conversations, yeah. adding another storage tank, you know, to yeah. the system is probably going to need. It looks like that we will want to consider that. But one of the, we had a call the other day, Angelo, that. Among the consultants, uh, Jim was there uh, as well as Mike and so forth. The, the thought is perhaps putting the new storage tank, you know, off of you know the uh, Wheeler Hill line DEP and having it someplace, whether you know at the high elevation, whether it's on Carnwath or yeah, someplace really there. Mike that. really wants to do that because then that allows for the potential also expansion. Right. And we need a storage yeah. tank there. We could put one at Hilltop. But it can't take a full large one. It would be a smaller one, so the money involved. And that also could be available you know, under right. the federal guidelines, perhaps, for money, because we're, we're looking at building out sewer, uh, water you know, for the town, where wells are failing. I'm mean, generally Thank speaking you. on that no, they are. specifically. But, you know. Well, the other thing, too, was that you know, the discussion that Mike said is uh, putting a t water tower on that side of town is beneficial in the event that there's a break somewhere along yes. the line on yeah. Old Hope. We got a backup. Yeah. We well, we happen to own uh, the highest elevation on that side of town, so yeah. you know, right. why not? Yeah. Which is a good thing. Yes. So, so that that something just came up, you know, that we're looking at. But I think uh, Mike is very favorable for moving it, you know, along. So I think we'll we'll see some further discussion on that. Uh, you know, I I would say, you know, that uh, with. with with uh, Tim and CPL and, and Mike, you know, very proactively looking at these various issues. As you can see, we have a lot, you know, we have to prioritize them. And, uh, but I think, you know, we have, uh, fortunately, the capacity in water that can handle, you know, thanks to the build out of the two wells since you know, we've been uh, on the board. Okay, go ahead, Tim. All right, so moving down, to update on Challenger Field, crack repair, I'll let Al talk his, uh, I was away. We had some guys out there. I mean, he's dealing with crack out at the ball field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Straight that. Um. 
Yeah, so Tim, if you want to show some of the pictures, that's great. So what we did was, the other day I was out there um, on Friday, and uh, I don't know if you have the picture before and after, but that's kind of the after These are picture. Actors. I don't have so them. what they did was they basically, where you see the light green material up there, mm. that's all brand new. So what they did was they removed that entire piece, put glue down on it, and put this whole brand new section. And that's what we authorized the $10,000 right. from, from Craft and, to and do. And that's glued down on concrete? And that's, that's right on concrete, okay. that's correct. So the, the one issue that we still have there, and I don't know if you can see it, so I'm gonna, it's kind of up for a second here, but you can kind of see a little bit of a crack between the two greens. Yes, yeah. the dark. It's the only other piece that, like, between the light and the dark. What we need to be able to do is we need to be able to see if we can put like a, a tape around that to try to, you know, keep that from becoming a problem. But again, the guys were out there, it's gonna cure for about two or three days before they can use it. Uh, Jessica did a great job rescheduling the folks because there's two areas that use it. That's LaGrange and a town of Wappinger. LaGrange has it from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The town of Wappinger has it on a Sunday. Uh, so they were able to reschedule so they could do this project. Otherwise, we'd probably be waiting another, probably a couple of months before they'd be able to go out so there and do it. What are we going to do on that right side? It looks like there's a drop off or a bigger crack. You know, so there's no real drop off there. It looks see like up a, there, upper portion now. Is that where the corner is? Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, see where it, it takes almost right. like an L turn, you know, because uh, hit. Yeah. Because our kids that use it, you know, uh, can they maneuver it, or does that need Steve to fill in and? Just no, they'll be able. They'll be able to maneuver that. Basically, okay. the piece there in the light green is what they actually had to repair because yeah, again, no, that's no. that's where they had the half dollar cracks in the yeah. the actual right. rubber there. So that's what they were putting. They also repaired some of the infield spots too because there were some minor issues there as well. So they did a really good job in in taking care of that. Um, as you can see, it goes all the way around. And That's what, what Steve nice. can do there, Dick, is we're talking about some of that, looks like uh, dirt there or whatever. Right. Steve can go out there and kind of, you know, take care of that cliff a little bit there. So it's, it's, it's okay. You could buy sod now, right? Yeah, you could buy, buy sod or put something yeah. out there. But the basic thing was, again, that light green section was where, you know, wheelchairs, yeah, et cetera, were getting back. caught there. Yeah, and right. so that was a problem. So the other thing too you gotta think about is they're looking about doing a Jubilee in 2022. So if they do that, they want to be able to use this particular park. So this is good right. that we got this completed, not only from a safety issue, but also from you know potential New York State Jubilee thing that they want to do in 2022. So um, this is a lot of good work that they did out it there. It's very nice. It does, it looks very nice. So what needs to be done? They, they put a tape or they- like, Yeah, so what, is, what? what it is, it's a tape. So originally what happened was that was a white line, I guess, in the past, Jessica. Yeah. And so we talked to Mike and Bettina Bichetti and they didn't want the the white line there, but actually a, a, a tape going across there, which is what Craftco recommended, that's what would go uh, there all the way around. And so we're, we're trying to, I called Mike and uh, he's gonna go take a look at that. Mike Braschetti is gonna go look at that with, with Bettina and see if they recommend the same thing because again, they want the field to kind of be compliant to what they need, et cetera. So that's what we're looking at doing. So they're gonna go out there hopefully this weekend, hopefully Sunday, because the field will be available on Sunday. Uh, for, for their use, and then you know, I'll probably go out there Sunday as well just to kind of get their opinion, pick their brain as to what they want to do. But um, it, it came along really, really nice. If you saw the, the actual, it's like a mix they do there for that the rubber stuff. And I actually have a, a copy of the mix I can, I'll show you guys. But it's actually what it is, and I'll pass this around. It's kind of probably hard to see, but they actually mix it up in a wheelbarrow. Wow. So it's pretty cool what they do. But again, it, it changes color, they mix it. They put it down and then they tamp it down. Um, so it's a really good job there. So again, safety, looks like uh, everything is taken care of. And again, we'll take a look at the brown outer edge there where the dirt is to make sure, again, no issues there as far as a uh, wheelchair or anything else goes off the edge there. But again, I wanna thank the board for approving that expense. Uh, this has been something they've been trying to get done for probably a good year to two years. And so thank you for your support for making this happen. Looks good. Okay, so then the next topic was uh, an update on Carnwack. Um, I know Dick was inquiring the uh, status of like the water service, right? Yeah, well, we've gotten a letter. And I, I thought I had reproduced a copy of it, but I didn't, but I'll, I'll, I'll find it. Sandra may have it. Uh, uh, from uh, the Pontes on behalf of the Sports Museum. Uh, Joey is on the board. He may also uh, be able to comment more, but there specifically trying to promote you know, the uh, additional use now that you know, re COVID restrictions are coming down. There's a lot of inquiry interest in the sports museum uh, and uh, they you know, want to uh, desperately want to have the water 
going into you know the building uh, and done you know done properly uh, of course and you know for the uh, restroom you know facilities uh, at a minimum right and Joey was there anything more to that you know that you could just comment on you know, just you know sit at the chair uh, so just by way of background too it's been two years since we had our grand ribbon cutting reopening the sports museum that I believe most of the board was at. Yeah, I, I just saw some of the pictures, uh, found some of the pictures. So it's been two years. And the museum, we completely renovated it. Uh, it's, a, it's a great museum, but uh, last year, the year before that, uh, our visitors had to use porta potties when they entered the museum. Which are still out there. Which are still out there. Thankfully, the town is, uh, is taking care of that for it. us and maintaining it. But uh, we have handicapped uh, individuals uh, that come to the museum. We also do specialty tours uh, pre-COVID with uh, groups such as Aster and um, Abilities First. They come out to the museum and do special tours for children that are handicapped and uh, have special needs. And they have to use porta potties Now, again, we are in a pandemic as well. We're coming to the end, but it's not very clean from a perspective for visitors to the museum to use porta potties um, again, it also restricts the uh, vast potential of the overall Reese Cultural Center by not having fully usable uh, bathrooms and kitchen facilities as well. Uh, so what we're hoping to, uh, to get from the town board is approval to move forward with uh, running water lines within the building, doing plumbing to connect the ground floor as well as the main floor where the sports museum and chapel are located. In, in our, you know, bond, you'll recall in the bond application, we do have a pot of money that was set aside for potential projects like this. So, you know, if it was uh, intended for that or perhaps for other purpose, but, you know, that's uh, in that bond, you know, that's coming up with and shortly as far as the uh, public uh, hearing on it goes. And so. uh, I think you guys might remember as well, the supervisor presented a draft a business plan of sorts yeah. for the Reese Cultural Center is presented to you, to you all last year. And we can and I can dig it out because actually I, I have it on, yeah. on my desk. And uh, we can provide that again to you. Uh, but from there we got quotes from Freedom you know, Plumbing uh, to run those water lines within the building. And then ultimately do uh, you know, heating split units, Mitsubishi split units on the ground level and the main sports museum level. Uh, that most of which could be probably done and, and gained through volunteers and uh, donated funds as well. Um, but if we can move forward with this, this would actually uh, increase the potential use of this building and this complex as well. Uh, and the sports museum continues to be a, a paying tenant to the town. So you also have uh, friends of Carnworth account too as well? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. And so some of that money can be applied to some of the improvements we wanted yeah. to hear? Or, yes. is that, or is it specific to, I don't know, special projects no, at all? No, no, it, it, it's, it's a general purpose. And Alex Reese said, you know, since he was the corpus of that money, you know, he, he doesn't mind how it's used. I yes. think the, the but, board would decide. But also, well, also with, with the board, uh, just I mean, by way of background, we do feel that the town should bear most of the cost of the capital infrastructure uh, costs uh, since it is their building, and that has been the, uh, the idea in the past. And what we thought about using that money is doing a number of the cosmetic improvements, such as renovating the interior of the chapel, renovating a number of the interior portions of that building. This way the town would have community center space and so on and so forth. So the water, that. the water that comes from the water line into the building, yeah. right? Is that part of this? Uh, that, so the Camo Pollution Control donated, uh, I believe last year, uh, a water line ran it underneath. Uh, it's buried up until the stone wall on the opposite side of Carnwath Farms Lane. Then it goes above ground. The highway department did say that they would be able to dig that trench and dig it underneath all the way to that hydrant, and Camo would then put in a permanent tap into the New York. So County. behind the admin building, right? That's where the water line is. So you'd have to dig it from the back of the, the admin building because I know they have a, a temporary one that goes from a fire hydrant that's over that to the building. Would be. That that's it would go straight up that hill to that closest. So how much is it to make that permanent? Tim, you, did you? I don't have 
Is that, was that no, that's Frino's different. Interior. 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 Yeah. So yeah. Paul's is somewhere around twenty-two to twenty-five thousand. Yes, for all the interior plumbing. We, we had our first. plumbing engineer look at it, and she put a budget number of forty thousand because you need backflow prevention. That that was included in his. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. so if we were to do the whole project, um, you know, we would need to know how much from the water line right. to the building, how much from inside the building. You know, is it? It's water for the whole building, or what it is would it? be for the ground level and first floor for now, with the potential to. But expand. then you'd be able to expand. But you can use it for the water. bathrooms upstairs, because yeah. yes, you would be the sports museum chapel bathrooms would be used in the whole ground floor. What was the water supply previously to this building? Wells. Well, it was wells. And the wells failed, or we we decided to go off the well field. Why? Like. Because, uh, because we had the New York City water line there, and before we had chemo pollution coming through and treating each of the wells maintaining the four pumps on the property. So I guess it became costly and uh, the idea under the Barbara Gutzler administration was eventually to tie into the New York City water line. <laughs> and we tied in the administration building. And how well has that gone? Well, <laughs> well we did tie that into the administration is okay. building. Yeah, yeah and building really is well. fine. Right. So we did tie that in. Uh, that was a project approved by this board a couple years ago uh, when we had to uh, do the underground electric service. So, and things like so that. let's we get have that you know the project. estimate. You know, looking at it again, Tim. You know, for the the whole project, but building in Paul Frino's. You know, you can talk I, with him. But I believe, back to the councilman. You know, the outside work going up to the the source of it. You know, I believe look looking back, just and we can get the updated uh, everything too. Because Mike right now has a temporary pressure valve right from the oh, fire right. hydrant going yeah, in because you have too much right. water pressure. Otherwise, that's correct. Right. So. so I believe. Just in, in recollection, it was just around $100,000 to do inside work. Out, outside work was very minimal, but to do the incomplete interior. And so oh, we should get all floors for, for, all for, for the first and second floor. Oh, we have not talked about the third That includes floor. the heater system yeah, that or includes, humidity? Yeah, that includes the Mitsubishi control. units. So everything. can we do things in phases rather than doing it all yeah. at once? Or? I mean, it, that's up to the board, yes. So, so what we'd like to do is maybe a proposal minimal. says, let's see it in phases, what it's going to cost, and let's see what it's going to yeah. cost in total. Because yeah. as you say, there may be some money that we're looking for that was part of that bond right. we're looking at. Yeah. They could, they That's could do right. That. So, Tim, you know, like you did with the water supply on Route yeah. Nine and the other areas, let's get a total number, look at possible phases, you know, and uh, you can, you know, also communicate with the friends of Carnwap too to see what their plans are, and then, you know, hopefully in one of the next couple of meetings, you know, you can report back to us. Okay. And also, be rocket science. to go off of this too, this would then open up the potential of. Uh, potentially renovating that uh, kitchen space that's down there for potential revenue for the town. Councilman Phillips and I have I think talked at length about that kitchen. <laughs> and that's something if you know we were able to hook yeah, up this and, and we do have interests, you know, yes. different interests, you know, whether it's from Sparrow's Nest, from autism group, you know, various things. Uh, even to, Meals on Wheels you know, to use that kitchen and you know clean it up. So and get so it back I, I to your point earlier What's the ADA accessibility of the building? Well, I was just going yeah. to ask because we put together the whole application, right? Yeah. The CDBG right. We're still waiting on yeah, that to be finalized. Yeah. But the uh, ADA compliance to the Sports Museum and, tra and Chapel, it, it, we are fully in compliance there. We, uh, we still have the handicapped accessible ramps, the doorways are wide enough, we have X amount of uh, space. Um, the actual building itself is ADA compliant from various points. The bathrooms uh, on that floor are? Yes. That can be a, the former use of, of the property was a uh, was a uh, home for right. uh, special needs. But you know, in the, it is still in the CDBG zone. grant, we had proposed if you look at the the gray area uh, on the uh, left side of the building, then a lot of you know work there and taking it in through yeah, the back, right. as Tim can show you, That's for the that would right. have you know a ADA accessible you know a path and doors. And so yes, that's the this is for the ground level. And the idea was once you got inside the building through an exterior route, then it would be interior to the chapel, right. the, below right. the chapel. Below the chapel, the, the two community rooms. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And, and we do, do we have, have, sorry, do we oh. have any idea when the county's going to announce those awards? Or? Well, we're we working have, with we're them. Working we have an issue with them. Yes, yes, we are working on that. Um, so, so we, you know, I, I heard you got us $2 million. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, no. if, if we did, we wouldn't be discussing this here, probably. <laughs> Um, well, we still be discussing it, but, now that it would. but uh, we do have a lot of community groups too, very interested, Good. Uh, yeah. very yeah, interested right, between right, renting yeah, and even sure. uh, uh, volunteering time. You know, doing a lot of the you know work on the inside. 
Um, so there is a lot of community interest out there. I just so it'd be so good to probably dust off what you said, the proposal yeah. that shows, you know, here's here's the, the payback over X number of years we're going to invest and, X number of dollars, so we can just see. And, and Tim could look at the exterior, you know, finalization, making it, you know, compliant and underground and what have you, yeah. so we can do that. And this week okay. we'll resend you guys that uh, okay. draft master yeah. plan again. So, I guess uh, to Bill's points earlier, sprinkle is required? Uh, according to what? Probably. Well, according to... It's it's rating, yeah. so, uh, it's I a, think at full build out, yes. Like you would have to. Sure. But if we're doing these I mean, it's an I. It's an I. Right. It's an I use. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You would but need that one. Be careful with that. <laughs> and, and that's going to be a huge expense. Right. And I would. And I would argue too. Uh, our, most of our schools don't have sprinkler systems except does, for. It doesn't matter. Does grandfather was new construction. Doesn't well, matter. Yeah. So, this is, this is one issue this that is I have from my zoning. Right, but new construction, you have to yeah. meet code. So right. Uh, right. if I, God forbid, have a fire there, yeah. okay, yeah. right now, okay, I can't access that fire hydrant. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So we need to find a solution where if we have an emergency there, yeah. uh, once, uh, you know, once we have, uh, you know, a plan in place, we can't just be tapping off a fire rider. It needs to be a permanent connection. Right. Yeah, well, that's, that's what that's right. That needs to be part of the quote. Yep. You know, I think that's what Tim will look yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right now, the fire hydrants are running through the field. You know, yeah. I, right. you know the closest one that we could access is that one, and that one is being used for, for water supply. So uh, we need to really take a close look at that, yeah. uh, especially if we're going to have increased use yeah. on that building or if we're doing construction. Um, you know, we want to be in a position where we can, uh, uh, you know, handle an emergency there. Well, I think the alternative to that is you take the water line behind the admin building, you run that permanently to the sports museum, then you take the fire hydrant, which is, I call it a temporary hookup right now, just to get water into the building. That's where you get your water okay. flow for, well, you, you know, to make sure out. it's fire rated. Yeah, you've got to make sure well, it's fire rated. Those are fire rated. Oh, yeah. Those are very powerful mm -hmm. hydrants. But the point is, um, yeah. We need to keep our eye on the ball there. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Council, now, there was a standpipe too that ran through. You guys used to do those well, standpipes are not anywhere near certified at this point. No, I was just saying if we would be able to hook up the water line to that building, would we be able to re? Well, we'd have to we'd have to look at that. Right now, I'm not I'm not trusting I'm not trusting that standpipe. If there's a fire in there. Yeah. Um, but at this point. Um, we should get a quote that includes all of the work on that. And then Friends of Carnwath, how much does Friends of Carnwath have right now? Uh, that, that's within our general budget. It's a private organization. Um, that would have to be discussed by the board. To well, say but how, much, how much money is it, 36, I think? It, it's more it? than that, yes, yeah, okay, but, but so. that would have to be voted on by the Friends of Carnwath. Yeah, sure. But right, but let me ask you this. So how did the Friends of Carnwath money get separated from the town of Wappinger? Because it was a trust I'm account. Aware. I'm not the president. Right, it was a trust account. Yeah. A four hundred. Well, it was. I mean, I'm not sure actually how it got into the town of Wapiti yeah. because all the checks it's were made the out to the Friends question. of Carnwath. Correct, but it was documented through the town clerk's office as a trust account, just yeah, like I mean, the Sergeant Palmatier Fund is. Yeah, historic or something. Yeah. So at some point, my understanding is that money was taken from the town without authorization of the town board. So we need to figure out how that happened and where that money is, because I would argue that we do have a fiscal responsibility over that money. Yeah. That's I'm great. not the president of the organization. So What's that? I'm not the president of the organization. Right, but I mean, I, that's all irrelevant to me. Yeah. My question is, from a legal standpoint, it was a trust account through the town clerk's office. We were getting, on an annual basis, we would get a statement right of that funding. And I've noticed in the last calendar year that that no longer exists. And I'm hearing that it's autonomous and separate from the town now. So that needs to be, Who could you know, give us that information? We, we previously yeah. had the ability to decide, okay, Friends of Carnwath money can be used for this, mm -hmm. town money can be used for this. Now, from what I'm hearing, we don't have the ability to appropriate Friends of Carnwath money. Is that true? Yeah, yeah I'm not, not sure if we ever not did. not in the town's but, account. Well, yeah, I mean, if it's, so. if it's not, you know, ultimately the question was, and I don't, I don't know if it was ever donated to the town. Uh, for at some point in time, there was. I don't know why the town was holding that money, because I believe they're a separate entity. They're separate, you know. Uh, yeah, they're a 501c3. Separate, it's a five hundred one c three corporation. Right, uh, but they weren't know. always a five hundred one c three. Right. So the question, though, was, 
I, that ultimately is the question. And I mean, the money that was originally in the town's accounts have long since been spent. So let me just say it this way. Previously, the town board had the ability to decide what the Friends of Carnwath money was going to be spent on. Now well, I'm hearing that we don't. Well, again, once whatever was originally donated to the town for the purposes of Carnwath was spent down, okay. if the Friends of Carnwath raised additional yeah. funds yeah. on their own, that would be a separate right. legal which, entity. Which was my understanding, yeah. and that's what Alex Reese yeah. confirmed. Okay. And, and I remember that but we, we can still too under, uh, I mean, we could look at deputy we could look at that. I think uh, we need Bob to look Johnson. at it for transparency yeah. reasons. What's that? Former Deputy Supervisor Bob Johnston, I remember, was very involved in that and saying that the town... During uh, his three months here? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but when he was uh, an elected <laughs> official, uh, he did say He was that. very involved. I've been here for 15 years, yeah. and you're telling me a guy who was here for six months was very involved. He, he, okay. Uh, uh, well, uh, Councilman, so that, was, that was all part of it, and he felt that. Okay. My point, town, though, Joey, it never well, came to the town board. We never made a decision on this. Councilman, so. I have nothing to do with that. Okay. You, so you guys are the, the point is, though, if we're going to be putting uh, if we're going to be putting money the into the line. property, I agree with your uh, approach that capital projects should be the responsibility of the town board. However, uh, I want to have uh, you know an idea where the friends of Carnwath stands with their money so that we can balance out these these priorities. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's all part of a conversation that we'd like to have too, is, is say, all right, which aspects will the town board take on and, and which aspects will the Friends of Carnwath? Because we would like to take on most of the cosmetic renovations. You know, right, but when we're, value, if, if well, we're yeah. using taxpayer dollars, we have to be very careful. Exactly. You know, if there is a, there is a good uh, argument to be made relative to sprinkler requirements, okay, yes. because then taxpayer dollars for uh, public safety and uh, for uh, health reasons with the, with the bathrooms, yes, I have no objection if we're going to have an occupied space that the town board uh, authorized funding taxpayer dollars to sustain that. We're getting money from the tenant, right? Yeah. We reduced the tenant's rent in good yes. faith uh, due to the challenges that were, were faced previously. But now, you know, it's a new chapter now. We're coming out of COVID. Yeah. Uh, we have an opportunity to uh, really utilize these spaces. I want to make sure that we understand all uh, all the angles on this so that we can convey to our constituents that, okay, listen, we're going to pay for the water line. We're going to pay for the safety and the, the health purposes of this project, but the beautification aspects of it will be paid for by the nonprofit side. I think well, that's important. I mean, I Well, that won't be happening in, in yeah, the short term. Yeah, probably won't happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. It could help you, but really. It could help. The sports museum pays insurance, too. It could potentially help with our collection. So True. the other issue, too, is a lot of the grant funding that's out there um, in, the, in the grant application process, the more entities that are involved, um, the better, the better you, you, you have. And one of the issues here, so I don't necessarily know if you net, would necessarily limit it to just cosmetic improvements because sometimes, you know, getting a match from a, a from a not for profit in addition to municipal funds can help. So, you know, if there's a grant if there's a grant program out right. there where right. you know you can get sprinklers, and you know, getting grants from an outside you know uh, friends of account would help. Yeah. Um, I think you know. I, I, that would be helpful. It, it, it would. It so would I actually. think it should have a little flexibility with respect right. to that. More partners, and that's where the town could use the Friends of Carnival, the Sports yeah. Museum, as additional community partners to be more competitive in these grants. No, I agree, but we have to remember this is a huge building. Absolutely. You know, the, that's why we want to handle this in phases, too. Right, so. but I mean, the, the, the Sports Museum is, a, is at the most one-third of this. That, that's correct, yes. You know, yes. I mean, that's, we're, that's a that's huge building. You start talking Very about big. infrastructure improvements on the second and third floor and sprinklers, and then you're talking millions, not, that's, that's what, that's not $36,000 exactly. match. <laughs> that's why we you wanted, to, are. Talking a that's lot why of we wanted to address this in phases. Right. The easiest aspects, which are the ground level and the, and the first floor, keep the second and third floor kind of closed off, you know, in a sense, no, any, no infrastructure running through there until we have potential uses. Are we still using the third floor for storage? Half of the third floor is still used as town records. And the other half, Cooper took down uh, on his back. Yes. You know, Cooper, and, uh, <laughs> that ended up in the building next door? Yes, yes that's good. Yeah. Right. single-handedly carried Cooper all did an amazing job. <laughs> so all that's now all I want to control, though? 
Well, does the elevator work? The building next door is climate controlled for those records, correct? Yes. That's right. Yep. And so majority of the records over at Harnlock or the town's records from mostly the 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, the Gerry administration supervisor records are there. But nothing that could be uh, damaged from Nothing of periods. true significance. Really. All right, good. Yeah, we made sure we got the others here, so. And what occupancy level or what percentage of uh, the building next door is used now with records? Uh, that whole space. That whole it's space. Basically, that most, there is space, yeah. space for meetings, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, desks are there, but largely the whole space, though. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But we're, we're, you know, looking at uh, a, a, some of, I think you may recall, but also the school districts uh, and uh, Superintendent Box has been very helpful, even put in their newsletter that we're working with them on, you know, a volunteer program. I saw it. I saw and it. it's actually going quite well, just ready to start. And one of the things is to try to get our records uh, you know, digitalized and properly stored. But the first priority is here in Town Hall, because, you know, if you go into any of the, well, you go into the building department or you go into the tax assessor's department, they have a lot of paper there that actually, if we could free it up, yeah. uh, yeah. then make some other space available. That know, takes priority. There. And it's a it's a safety issue. Exactly. You know, with all that it should be done there. as soon as. Uh, related to that, um, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, Steve has uh, been working on getting uh, finalized and, you know, uh, it, we'll, we'll discuss it is you know, some different pop out windows in a couple of these areas, which are, it's are hermetically sealed right now and they can't get out of, you know, so uh, that he's gotten, I think some estimates on, you know, new replacement windows in four areas, you know, that would allow safety to get out in the event of a catastrophe of some sort. But uh, Tim, move on, you know, the, uh, on the, uh, back to the Carnweth, where do we stand on the roof? Thanks, Joey. Oh, but they are safe for Carnweth. Yeah, but where are we on so the roof? So the roof work was uh, approved. Uh, I know there was some apprehension uh, when they started looking at some of the rafters. I haven't heard that they've been out there. They, I have not seen them out there. So what I want to do is have a pre-construction conference call with maybe the supervisor and Joey and talk about them. They're going to get their lift and go up there. Okay. The last I heard, it was still a go, but I haven't heard the start. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll get back. You know, yeah. Let me know. And then next on the agenda was the airport drive. But, uh, Thank you. So yeah, so I just okay, want to... Thanks. We'll get back to the airport in a second. So what I wanted to do is I'm going to pass out some uh, pictures here. This is going to be of the Regency Park. So first of all, I want to thank everybody on the board uh, for putting together the park regulation sign. So this is probably the first one that's been out there on the, on the parks or, or one of the early ones that's been out there. So this one was put on a Regency probably about a week or so ago, but what's the great news thing? The, the one thing I want to do though is bring it to the uh, board's attention here. Um, we have a building, we've talked about this in the past. Um, at the, the meetings, uh, we do have a, a building back there that's the old Camo building. Um, these are just some of the pictures of what this building looks like, and I just, I just passed them out, so hopefully everybody can kind of uh, see this. I apologize because they're small pictures, but basically what this is, an old camo building. Uh, Steve's guy started to take the building down, actually took the fencing around the building down, started to look at the building, and then we put a halt to it because we thought there might have been some asbestos in the building. Uh, since then, we had a company called Quest uh, that was um, through uh, CPL, uh, they said they can't go into the building. It's too hazardous to go into the building. So what we need to do is we need to determine what are we going to do from this point because, as you can see, I mean, the roof's pretty much falling apart. This building's going to fall down. Somebody's going to get hurt. And it's been vandalized a number of times here. You can see that there's uh, boarding up here on the top. It's been boarded up two or three times already because uh, people have been breaking into this building. So what we need to do, and, and Tim's taking a look at this, we're going to see if we can move forward, find a company, get a cost on what it would cost to remove the entire building, take it down, you know, safely, because we're not sure if there's hazardous material or anything in there, so. What's in that building? There, right now, it's empty. It used to be a pump station. It used to be a pump base. station. But the other place was supposed to, the other entity Yeah, so was what happened was when they put up the cell tower, right. the cell tower was supposed to pay for, I guess, the demolition of this building. That never happened. Don't know why it didn't happen, but it didn't happen. Well, the cell tower, it wasn't, it's not the cell tower that was there. Yeah. It was a different cell different tower. Different cell tower, that's right. Proposal. 
But you know the the contra quest that is went that, in there believes that there is asbestos related uh, to the roof. So this building is going to have to be taken as a hot tear right. down and find a contractor that will be able to dispose of the material properly. So it's a common thing. Yeah. I mean, it's not like right. it's a huge brownstone building that you gotta. No, it's a water it's district it's expense water anyway. Yeah. Right. 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 So yeah, again, it's gonna it it's gonna potentially fall down. Somebody's gonna get hurt. We want just want to make sure that again, yeah, this is like something where it's a safety okay. issue. And we need to address it. I'm hoping in the next, you know, board meeting or the one after that, we have an estimate from a company on what it would cost to take it down because we really should uh, pursue that as soon as we can. Um, we do have a number of folks there that have been very vigilant about some of the issues we've had there. Uh, we've had Beth and Diane as well as Robert out there uh, giving me daily updates on uh, what's going on. I want to thank them for their efforts out there because they've kind of been the, the voice of the folks over at Regency Park. And they do give me updates, but uh, they did ask to pass along our thanks for not only the playground, but the signs. You know, some more work that needs to be done. But I think this is probably the most uh, nearest and dearest to their hearts, uh, as well as ours, that needs to be taken care of, you know, as soon as possible. So again, I just wanted to bring that to your attention, because I'm going to continue to bring this up at the, the board meetings until, until this building is finally, um, you know, demolished here. Again, safety issue, need to take care of it as soon as we can. Thank you, Tim. I mean, I think the thing to do is to have CPL develop specs. We're just going to have to go to bed. And, and go to bed. All yeah, yep. agreed. Just take it down. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the only <laughs> issue is it's, yeah. in a, you know, it's in a floodplain, so I don't know if that's going to complicate things, but it shouldn't. I think so. No. It's not like we're trying to build it in the floodplain. You just can't. All right. Yeah. It has a basement, no? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I was using it. It's a wet well. Show, but the roof is caved in entirely through the floor into the basement. So, I mean, it still looks sort of like a building. From it the still looks like one, but it's really not if you try to get close to it. I was out there the other day. Kids and have access to this. Yeah, right now, it's all gated off. I, I will say that something? Steve did remove. There used to be these white barrels out there, and Steve did remove those. So that was good news. Um, again, it was uh, an eyesore. Well, so we are taking care of some yeah. of the stuff as best we can. She started to take down the fence, you know, what she did do. But then I raised the issues. Anybody thought about asbestos? Because I don't want to have any of our people or anybody else sure, in arms way. asbestos sure. in the logs. <laughs> so, you know, that that's why it's kind of on. What's changed a little bit, so I think if Tim can just get yeah, that. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and put the aspects right. Yeah, Jim, is uh, is that something that should be charged to the water district, yes. right? Not town A fund. No. Perfect. Okay. The water, you know. Mm -hmm. was, and then, yeah, that if was we agreed, uh, Bill's going to be responsible for it, right? <laughs> And he's going to assume the buyers and wants the day. I'm that operations. guy that comes in. Yeah. <laughs> Just say yes. And he's buying lunch. Um, <laughs> and if anything goes wrong, we're going to have to So, no, it's a, it's a water district expense. Right. Originally, originally, that was the water, uh, that was the, the water uh, pump station for um, the first phase of Rockingham. Or actually, the first couple of phases of Rockingham. And, uh, you know, that was built, that was built by... Uh, by the developer, it was a waterworks corporation. It was not a town town facility. The town ultimately took it over when they took over the the, the Rockingham water system. Okay. And actually, the people on Brown Road, those people who signed the petition, they actually right. their property is adjacent, adjacent to this water right. to this pump station. So I've asked Mike to take a look at some of these other defunct uh, sites that we have. And we should. Do we have any other buildings of this nature or? other you know, potential dangers so yeah. we'll get back on that as well you know we we do have uh, several other structures and I think uh, you know uh, one the biggest one which is actually being used for you know storage uh, you know what is it off of uh, Patty Lane or you know somewhere you know, back in it's the old Oakwood plant. the old Oakwood plant you know so that's a big building oh it's sutures yeah that's what it is mm -hmm. Uh, so, but we're using that actually for storage. I think a lot of the legal records right. are from uh, really, yeah, from Stenger Roberts. You know, when Jim was there, our store there. Yeah. So a big building. You know, where's that off of? That's off of Sutch. Back off in Sutch. It's all the way in the no, back. No, well, no, it's Patty. 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 Yeah, Patty. Yeah, that's why I said originally yeah. Patty. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's between. Oh, it's a, it's a, it was a yeah. sewage treatment yeah. facility. Yeah. And it's got a fence around it, right? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah I remember. That. I think so. Yeah. I've never seen it in person, but I've I believe seen there's, uh, there's, is, I believe there's also a pump station in that. Yeah, there's one place there. there. Is too. And I think Mike was using the store uh, water meters and some other right. things. And there's a yep. washing machine and dryer that I think he had used at one time to clean their 
Right. So, but that is a building that. Uh, and that building's in pretty good shape. And that is on our insured, you know, list. So, Steve takes care of it. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Airport Drive. Yeah. So, Airport Drive Field is a, a field that's kind of difficult to. Oh, uh, you just preface it again. Is that during the last rainy spell, most recent one, the, the fields got flooded again, and. Uh, Al and I and maybe others have been, you know, getting, you know, proper, you know, legitimate inquiries about it, and we've seen pictures of, you know, the ponds that are in the field. So, you know, we've asked uh, again, t Tim, to look back, you know, re refresh our memories of what some of the estimates were for the cost. Which so when when you do that, I'm going to come up with, I'm going to tell you some options that Dick and I have been looking at as well. So why don't you go through yeah, the go presentation through. of the cost and then so I'll the tell you some things about it. There was a million dollar price tag to upgrade this entire facility. We think it's a million. I thought it was a more assessment. I couldn't find it. I spoke to Bob Gray actually this morning. He thinks it was originally put together by Padgett. I believe that's the case. And that, so it's an old one, so, so a million then is probably two million. I said the L two million. Now, I've heard, that's going back. What Bob recalled was it had called for four to five feet of fill in here. Right, right. It was a, a rate, right. And you can't fill the floodplain. So uh, this shows some wetlands on here that you, it may be hard to see. Yeah. I don't have the wetland or the floodplain delimited on here, but trust me, it's in there. As you can say, it rained and it flooded, right? So right. that's the issue. Um, and it's a constant problem, you know, and so that's... And the water just doesn't have anywhere to go. And right. it's sloped across there. And so when we looked at this a couple of years ago, we thought, well, could we just have maybe Steve or somebody go in and fill in the divots and the, the potholes just to kind of fine grade the field, not what I call nuke it and completely recreate it, uh, and then maybe improve this uh, drainage swale. But then again, we started looking at the flow dynamics of the stream that kind of runs through here, and there's this pond. It's got a back pitched uh, culvert, which I think they did intentionally because I think they use this pond to maybe irrigate that little cemetery that's there. Mm -hmm. Van time. And then we follow the drainage down across over by the airport, and there's some uh, kind of high spots in the stream that make it back up. So the water table is really close to the surface. It's right. a very lazy. I mean, you may have six inches like during dry weather between top of the stream and the, the land surface. So to me, this is just an inherently problematic uh, scenario that you can only maybe put band-aids on to make it a little better, safer play area, but I don't think you're gonna be able to really rectify all the issues. So what, what we talked about, Dick and I talked about, was putting together a task force, uh, including Dick, myself, Steve, Jessica, uh, Brian Larson, Anybody else from the SOC organization that wanted to join? I met Brian the other night out at the fields. Um, we talked about a number of other options, temporary options, because at the time we, we get emails every day saying, can't use the field, can't use the field. I think uh, Friday was the first time they were able to use the field in two weeks. So some of the options we looked at are some other fields potentially. So we looked at, as an example, Castle Point. There's down by the softball field, there's a big piece of property that Steve does maintain that we could potentially use. That's one option. Uh, we also talked about Carnworth. You have 99 acres there. There's some flat land out there. You might be able to potentially use that. The other one, which um, I thought was pretty interesting, was Mart's Field. Mart's Field, you know, is a baseball field, but nobody uses it at a baseball field. It's enclosed. Um, I brought these options uh, to, to Brian, and Brian was, you know, agreeable. Hey, let's take a look at this stuff. He particularly liked, actually, the Mart's Field idea because, again, it's enclosed. Soccer balls are not going to go out on the road. There's some, you know, parking and stuff. So... Again, what we want to do is form a, a task force that's going to be able to figure out what is the best solution. And it's going to be a temporary solution if they can't use, as an example, airport drive. We've got to look for a more, I'll call it long-term solution. Right. One of the things we, right. we had talked about, uh, Dick and I, is we have some property that goes off Robinson Lane. It's about 50 acres. Well, some of that right is, next to the ball fields, right? right? We have that field. other. Some of it's turtles and some of it's wetland, but there is dry land there. But too. there is a possibility. Again, it's a long-term potential solution. Probably some money going to have to put into it because it's not but clear than to fill it. Two million into this. Yes. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know what we're talking about. Right? So, so yeah. again, these are just. Yeah, but also, Jessica, I think we have several ball fields that aren't being used. If we can repurpose, you know, some of that, you know, that well, we should look at it so that it's managed. You know, now with your software, we can manage it. 
you know, but also what Al and I were talking about, we have been getting requests yeah, exactly. for other field use, yeah. you know, lacrosse, rugby, you know, some of the other sports, so, you know, field hockey. Well, you know, the, so other, the other thing, too, frankly, we, we want some all purpose. is in addition to the fields, you need parking. Right. Well, that's what I was just going to say. Particularly, yeah. you know, for parking mm -hmm. is important. For soccer, because, you know, for every, so for every field, China. you're okay. going to have, you, you need parking right. for four teams. Yeah. You need yeah. parking for... The two teams that are on and the two teams that are coming right. on. Well, most of those fields at, at airport so. are more of our call it a backup practice facility. So you can go down, as an example, at Castle Point, and, and I parked on it because I played softball down there. There's ample parking. You can get a, a right. ton of cars down there um, that can park. And, again, you do have the, the, the playing Flat. field there. Right. Marts, Marts, I mean, Marts is only going to probably be one field's there. worth where you can, you can do practice. And there is parking. I mean, we used to have softball games there. We've had... Easter egg hunt down there. So there is some level right. of, of parking. Um, and certainly Carnworth, we have to yeah. see if there's ample parking there. Well, but, but, you know, there is, can be developed. <laughs> can be developed. So, so again, these are things we're looking at that we need to try to find a solution yeah. to. And Another I, question, Jim. If we don't use that for soccer, can we sell it? Sure. That's what I'm, you know, so what I mean, Al and I part, were talking it's, is it's we part, sell it. It's parkland. We've had several. I mean, the problem is that it's in a flood plain. No, I understand right. that. Right. So, but, but, but if anybody, but again, it's, it's, it's easier to I've raise a building out of a flood plain than it is it. to raise a soccer Does field out really of a flood plain. So, so one of the things we're looking at as we were talking about this, water and sewer goes up there. That makes it a very valuable piece of property, as we were just talking about with water and sewer before. So that might be, you know, another option. Again, options on the table. We want to make sure the soccer folks are involved in you know, the discussions and whatever, of course, with the town board, et cetera, and we'll figure out a solution. But again, we just want to give them some options, you know, in case the, you know, the can, as you said, high water, you know, level there. Uh, and, and again, anytime you get a little bit of rain, I mean, it's... We don't want to so, kick this down the road any longer, no. yeah. you know. We want to address it and, yeah. and figure out, you know, how we can better optimize our... Are they, our are they looking to do anything with uh, Wappinger's Lake? Because obviously we've got quiet acres that when the drainage worked, it was a great field. I mean, yeah. you could put three we, soccer we fields We thought on about there. quiet acres. Problem is, though, it's Park. as bad as airport drive. You a little bit of water, the creek's right well, there, and you're That's flooded. the problem. The creek backs up yeah. and floods yeah, there. That's right. So we never fixed the creek that we should have done. The problem is, you got, no park, you got no real parking down there, though, well, right? That, that's can, that's, that's, an that's easy the other thing. issue. That's an easy thing. But, uh, but anyway, I think we need to look at these yeah. and look at how we use our, our, our fields, right? right. I mean, if we have parks, that meet the needs, right. we use them with minimal amount of money right. to put them. We, we use what we have. If Castle Point is good, pursue that. But Prioritize them. Also, we look we'll at it, Robinson, there. if there are, as, as Jessica says, maybe yeah. two, you know, fields there. Because there's a big plot of land going. So we north. looked, we actually looked at that. Yeah, yeah. come on. <laughs> right, that's fine. Go ahead. Um, did anything ever happen with the property to the other side? Uh, that that's, was possibly that's the, the, not turtle infested? Which uh, no, nothing happened on that side. No. Okay. I don't right. think that the town even acquired that. No. Okay. Town no, did the, not acquire that. On the opposite that, side. Go you on, mean go on. The, the one associated with Wappinger Farm. Yes. yes. Right. right. We, we, the subdivision plat approval is contingent on a getting a trail, but the DEC determined it to be Blanding's turtle habitat. Oh, more turtles. But if you can repurpose <laughs> the existing property, yes. like you said, Al, Mart's Field can be used for soccer. A buddy of mine who is from the town of Wappinger is announcing a soccer game at Yankee Stadium today. So if they can repurpose Yankee Stadium, we can repurpose yeah. Mart's Field for, yeah. for soccer. And a great choice. And that's yeah. got parking and it doesn't flood. So I have no objection to, to doing that. Like and we have lights yeah. and we can get more lights. and yeah. yeah, whatever we need to do. I mean, that's higher elevation. There's parking there. And you have facilities. You so, got facilities yeah. there. Yes, and you have facilities there, correct. Right. Because okay. right, right now, uh, this is the worst time of the year to even be having this conversation because we'll think we have a solution, then it's going to rain. No, that, 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 that's the issue, and that's why we, we, that's why we brought to, it up today. Yeah, yeah. Go take this and drive well, it. Well, I mean, one of, the thi one of the things I think you should, in essence, develop, because, you know, my, my, both of my sons play soccer. My, uh, and, you know, my older son played travel soccer, and he's played on most of the fields in the county. A lot of the fields have, you know, all of the fields in the county have parking problems. Yeah. And then, you know, probably half of the fields in the county have flood issues. 
East Fishkill, yep. Town of Poughkeepsie, yeah. um, Town of Hyde Park on half the fields. So, you know, the, 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 it, it's a big issue, you know, in the soccer community. Um, but, w you know, w what I think you need to do is um, it, looking at the fields, you know, and the older kids play on a bigger field, the, the youngest kids play on small fields. So, you know, you could have a, and the youngest kids seem to generate the most traffic. Um, so, you know, you could, in essence, maybe develop um, and I, it, with, with them, with right. the soccer, if, you know, you could have complexes where the younger kids would play. You don't need a full-size field. You could get, right. you know, for up to, like, age six or eight, you could probably get four field, three to four fields on a regular full-size field that you would use for you know, the, the, the under 15 kids play on, under 18 kids play on. So, you know, that's one of the things you could look at. And then if you did it in that way, you know, you, you kind of template it out as a big field and then put all the smaller fields in it if you needed that to play, a, you know. That's the way it's set up at Airport that's Drive. That's right. They do their rotation there. Well, yeah. they've, got, got, a, I got, it. They've got, got a couple of big the fields and then the little kids play. Correct, that's you know, right. On the other side sure. of the... On the, on the other yeah. side of the, the bridge, the, the little bridge. Yeah. So, let, so let, if everybody agrees, let's do it. And I'd say, you know, CPL should have somebody on that, you know, to yeah, look at right. it. And then we can come up with some uh, further recommendations. But I think, Jessica, yeah. you know, if March is really doable, yeah, then we, can block that then we should. It seems like we have consensus here. We, yeah. we further explore that as yeah. an immediate, you know, issue yeah. and then, uh, you know, take it from there. But I think... You know, but I would like, you know, I have inquiries about lacrosse and rugby, so we look at some, you know, multi-purpose. The rugby players like Quiet Acres, they don't mind the mud. I, I understand. <laughs> they I love understand. Rugby players <laughs> maybe, love Maybe mud. that's what we do, but uh, in any event, like the uh, they love, well, you know, I, you know they, we can, I used to play we rugby. Yeah. Okay. And yep. yeah. rugby yeah. players so like soft we'll ground. Yeah. Because um, right. they yep. don't have padding and, okay. you know. So, and, put, and that's the way it is. One thing that, uh, and Al may ha you, do you have some other things? No. I'm okay. Fine. One thing that you know we've we've discussed, but I forgot to uh, ask Tim to look at it. But I handed out the copy. This is what <clears throat> you know, Bill and I and, and Anthony. You know, we've been talking about you know as far as Sergeant Palmatier. You know, I think uh, it, it and it's you know a lot of positive comments about having some new dedicated parking space and bike wrap and so forth there that would you know, further enhance the quality of the park. You know, so it's, it's something that Tim, you ha do you have it uh, on your screen? Because you had also given us, uh, given me, I think, an estimate of the cost. Uh, so the idea was initially was that that parcel would be developed uh, and parking for whatever would be on that property right. would be dedicated to the park. Obviously, that's not being developed at this point. So we need a temporary solution uh, or a semi-permanent solution, depending on how you look right. at it. This is a gravel entranceway um, with a parking area that uh, is uh, ADA compliant that holds seven cars, um, which would be uh, valuable because there is really no place to park right now right. on that shoulder. It's very challenging. Um, and, in uh, fact, I saw Lehigh out there on the shoulder today. Yeah. Where they're doing work, it's dangerous. You know, it's, they can pull right in. I yeah, mean, they can I told them in. they could just pull right in. But the point is, though, we have the 20th anniversary of 9 11 yep. coming up this year. It'd be nice if we can uh, have uh, accommodate more people uh, parking safely. Yep. Uh, and Anthony, who's the owner of that property, who owns uh, uh, the old Hopewell Commons, uh, seemed uh, uh, positive about doing this. Um, didn't seem to be. Uh, a heavy lift so this is something that we would bear the cost of right. to create the parking area he would give us the right to use the right. property until someone right. wants to develop it then we'll have to yeah. have the conversation and that's why we have gravel right now yeah. as kind of a temporary yeah. so you're only you're only going to do a gravel you're not going to do a block this is just gravel we want to keep it permeable we don't want to get permanent yeah. here at all um the idea was to have item four or something like that just so we can pull people can park out there okay. um, that would be, and maybe some curb stops to define yeah. where the parking spaces right. are. Uh, and we have a bike yeah, rack. Yeah, that's a good idea. What we be able to do yeah. is, um, if you look at the, like we did over at uh, Regency, there's yep. a lot of millings over there. Mm -hmm. If you have millings, right, you might be able to use that as a temporary, again, it's kind of like asphalt, and if Mike or Steve can roll it, 
You might be able to do that instead of doing just gravel. Yeah, it's just something else to, right. to take they a look at. They have that. They whatever, have a Miller. Whatever they recommend. Highway, right? The highway right, because we have it in stock. If we don't have to pay right. for it, why not use yeah. it when we exactly. have it? Exactly. Yeah. The other yeah. thing is, Jim, now that the road has moved, does the easement for the for the uh, utility lines move? No, the easement was the, um, the property was conveyed subject to the um, subject to the easements of the utilities. Okay. So the one the one thing that I think uh, I think the parking area and everything else is fine. The only question that I think needs to be looked at is the actual um, exit out onto the road. Yep. Um, right now we've got the curved signs there. Um, I think we should probably look at potentially moving that down um, onto the straight port. I don't know. I think there's an elevation issue there. It goes up. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I mean, the only the only question I have is traffic heading southbound. Um, you know, if you put that entrance there, you're going to take out those those signs, the Chevron signs that are there right now. And I just wonder yeah, if yeah, we'll have to take a look at that. Somebody's gonna, you know, go well, into the park, keep going into the park. And I've area I've asked them to. Yeah. Well, Jim and yeah, I were on the phone. Point. Asked them to redo yeah. what, what's the, the stripe stripe. You know, the center line strike. But also the speed study at the corner. Oh, yeah, the ball the, bank study, yes. yes. Right. So I don't want to get too deep into this right now because we're tight on time here, but um, this is this is a concept right now, yeah. okay? Um, if some numbers can be put together on yeah. what this would cost. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100,000. Well, I like 100,000, but this was if everything was bid. Yeah. I mean, could, could a highway do the parking and gravel and stuff? I don't think there's any issue with highway doing that because this is not even yeah. inside the boundaries of a park. Right. This right. is an extension of a town road. Right. 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 Exactly. I, mean, I think highway can do quite a bit of it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, that would be nice if that's possible. Um, I, I'll talk to Mike and, and see what, what they're willing to. Some plantings would be nice there. Yeah, to, he has landscaping. You know, you got landscaping on there. I think, you know, right now, um, We've talked to Anthony. He's now mowing that property. Previously, right. he was just weed whacking it. So, when we had the weed whacking discussion um, in <laughs> September, this past Thank September, you. it was about three feet high. Yeah. Uh, and we talked to him the night before, which was kind of short notice, and he mowed it that morning before the September. And put 11th. some new bushes in. And actually put some. <laughs> so I mean, the guy is doing. He'll that do whatever we great. want. Right. He's really a good citizen. Um, uh, you know, in this particular case, I think um, I'll talk to. Uh, I think he's got a golden. I'll, I'll talk to the gentleman from uh, the Toyota dealership, Lee Burns, uh, relative to mowing, you know, if we have grass there, because believe it or not, the town doesn't even mow Palmateer. Lee Burns graciously uh, mows it for us and pays for our power. So, <laughs> I mean, everything is handled by Wappinger's Falls Toyota, right. well, Lee Burns, right? Uh, it's a good cooperative. A cooperative yep. uh, agreement, and now Anthony wants to pick up his side of it, who owns Old Hopewell Common. So really, this is a, this is really a park that yeah, the is. neighbors are paying for. It's a community thing. Yeah, it's and uh, I just want to make sure the town board understood that this is where we're at. So looking at your numbers there. Again, we like you said perfectly. It's a concept. We can put it together quickly. If we can get highway to do most of the right. bulk of the work, then maybe we can dance a bid package yes. for landscaping, like you know, with shrubs and what you know, and all that's going to need a lot of feedback from whatever. from Mike, right? Well, I guess it should be said also that we do handle this park with a landscaping contract. It's like three thousand dollars with Lehigh because we we did an analysis and it was cheaper to have Lehigh do it than have Steve bring all his guys over there. To, to do it, so that's that's why we uh, just approved that at the last meeting. So there's a spring spruce up and right. a fall spruce up uh, that's done there. Um, this particular proposal here, if we can get the highway department to do some of the heavier stuff, um, we could probably save. How much money do you think we could save on this? Probably half. Oh, half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah think about it. The so, grading. The yeah, I mean, if you got the, the, the draining the and the millings and everything else, yeah. you can save a lot of money. Yeah. And if so, you if you have a contract with Lehigh. That would even take care of the landscaping for ten thousand dollars. Yeah, so. we rebid it to keep it transparent. You know, well, we, I mean, the landscaping. You're talking about maintenance. Maintenance. Right. Yeah, yeah, the maintenance. But I mean, what is? Landscape. But maybe, like you say, it's an incentive for them. Ex to keep exactly. Them yeah. Yeah. So that said, I'll work with Tim if it's okay with the board to yep. develop this onto uh, a real proposal. We can discuss this offline. I don't want to hold this up anymore as we uh, as we move. Right. Because this is a good indication for anybody coming and leaving our town. 
It, that's what I've always said. Oh, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, unfortunately, on the opposite it's corner, um, hopefully there'll be a solution at some point for, for uh, Five Star and the, uh, the vacant yes. uh, gas station. Um, we can only hope. I mean, I would right. love a quick check. I've said that on the record about 12 times, but I don't but, know if it's big enough space. But I think this is, is a definite <laughs> yeah, asset to our, so, to our community. Tim, thanks for putting this together when yeah, you guys did. But I think you could get a lot done there. Thank you. I'm just checking to make sure these numbers go all over the place. Go to the highway. Um, So the orange and red doesn't mean it's hot. It just no. is the <laughs> summertime colors. <laughs> we try to work with our architectural team, and they're not all local, so we try to spell it out for them That's by piece thing. by piece. So uh, they've gone in and sort of retooled the numbering here, but um, we're trying to do this again in a phased approach. We took care of the failing roof, demolished. We took care of the gas line. Move the gas safety. line. Yeah. Uh, Mike took care of the bathroom issue for the time being anyway. Um, but we've, we've kind of numbered these categories in description. I don't know that they have them here. So Steve identified that this flat roof right here needs replacement. They, they figured that out when they were demolishing, or somebody did when they were demolishing this back roof. Um, and it's really a needs-based thing, I guess. Um, the mechanics need a new uh, tube bay workshop with a, an even floor that they can roll on their dollies. They like the lift. Um, they need a really a separate, I think, workspace from shared machinery space. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right now, in, they internally pull out a backhoe and, and sit in the backhoe right. space. You know, I mean, they, they kind of need a dedicated space. Uh, so. The, I don't know if you want to go through every one of these line items, and I can email this if you don't have it, so that everybody can kind of see it. It's much better to go through it. But also mention the drainage. My, you know, one right. of my so big concerns is the retention pond and the drainage. So then all that's on here uh, relative to even like the water supply. I think there's there needs to be a, a drainage improvements. Like the supervisor was saying, we talked about regrading and fixing this uh, drainage from the pond that sort of floods this back area. Um, and you'll recall before we cleaned it out, what was it, last year or two years ago, we had some significant seepage issues into the residence right, right behind. Right, so exactly. that's why we did And then discovered that the pipes were clogged, and I think they did some temporary work. But it's it's not, you know, permanently fixed. There's not a liner or anything in there. So we I mean, the other issue that. is where it ultimately goes. You're right, right. It yeah. needs to be seen. Right. It seems to be relatively flat, yeah. and it doesn't. You followed it to the town village line, and right? From there, it picks up, but yeah. It's, it's still not. <laughs> yeah. But it has the, to go somewhere. Before the village was built, there was a water course, but yeah. Now there's a village in the way. <laughs> so if you had to prioritize, I assume water is number one. But would you say the new garage is kind of number two? Yeah. Well, I think I would. So what we're gonna, I, I like the idea of the phase uh, approach here, but w what I'd like to see is what do you recommend and what, what the, again, the cost is? Because I think you have some stuff that's in phase two that really probably could be, as an example, the water uh, maybe in phase one. And I, I can't see it because it's small, but. Well, I can, like, so, we, so I'll just go down what we took a stab at. It doesn't mean this is the answer. But we said phase, and it's hard to see both, but number one should be fix that flat roof, you know, stick okay. in time, save his nine. Uh, the garage break room improvements, just from a health and safety standpoint, I think should be uh, number two. Um, you don't want to do number two without fixing the roof over. So that's Correct. Right. Right. Yep. Um, then we, we ramp the site improvements up to number three. One the supervisor in here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I was just re responding to my wife. That's okay. No, so we, we moved that up to number three because we right. see she that just ramped something up to phase one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's I that's exactly that's right. That's pretty much. <laughs> you have the sound off, but you're right, Jim. That's how it but flows. yeah, I, you know, we, I think we do need to, to move ahead on some of this. You know, uh, right definitely. Now, right, and uh, you know, especially from a safety perspective, and, and we should. It, you know, it's. Uh, We've been talking about it for a long yeah, time, and right. I think we start need to take some action. This, this is definitely a priority. Right. And then, so uh, we worked with Mike and the crew out there, so it's not like it's just us in a vacuum. And I think they would like to see this uh, number four put the new shed roof back. Remember, it was falling in. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. we took it out. And they wanted to make it higher so that you know 
we could convert one of those garage bay space permanently yeah. for their that makes you know, sense. facility, but they need a higher for the vector. Equipment, so and since the gas line's been relocated, so we don't have to worry about that, and we can just put a right. unobstructed uh, space for vehicles or whatever right. there. So we can move that. We can move the back a lot of there, make space for the right. break room, and it's kind of all. Yeah, I mean the break room is we all. It's terrible. So don't we have an issue with the, was it? Like, I think it's called the vector tool, where they have to deflate the tires to put it in the garage. Yes, that's right. The back yeah. Yeah. So No, you're right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. So that, that would be rectified. I think Mr. Phillips has brought that up a number of times. Yeah. And you know, if you look at it with the, the repairs, it looks like one two seven should be in your first phase. Real. I mean, honestly, well, because I mean, a lot of them are are the site improvements, right. which right. which uh, you know is on top of the actual building repairs. Right. So, I mean, and like Angela just said, I mean, it all needs to be done. It's all kind of being but, right. kind It really, of, but, yeah. Um, well, I mean, and if you're gonna, guys, if you're gonna um, bond it, you know, you could right. bond the whole project, probably all of the phases, you know. I mean, it, you know, we had the discussion and you know, I think if you, know, wait, I, if you wait you know, to bond phase two, no. No, I, and I think, you know, our, you know, points, and particularly Councilman Bill had raised, you know, now as we're looking at inflation, right. you know, rearing its ugly head, we do need to move and put in what we can, uh, I believe. Well, you know, I, you know, the supply chain has collapsed, yeah. you know, and uh, prices are going up. And so that's, uh, whether or not it's been by design or something else, you know, I don't know. Well, rates went from 2% to about 3% yeah. now, it's so... Cost of doing business is going to go and up. materials cost. Oh. Just well, I mean, and, and, and we right now the federal infrastructure money is not out there. Mm. So once not that yet. money gets out there, yeah. and people start building and buying, the costs are going to go up that much more. So yes. can we use You're some of the right. chips money you've mentioned this before towards this project? Yes. So every capital improvement on this list you can do with chips money. Um, so I don't right, know what, what are you going to do for two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, so I mean, Break if this is talking one point one, you've got two hundred thousand dollars already covered, which means you got to bond for another roughly nine hundred thousand. Yeah, I mean, the only thing is that that whether you it doesn't so matter you either ship way. them. Yeah, if that's right. You're using so it for here's the only ball. here's the only good yeah. thing. Yeah. This is an A fund expense. Right. So you use the chips money, which we typically put in B fund. Correct. Right. So if you use the chips money for this, that's that's less of a a hit on the B fund. That's the, that's the upside. Really to not it. negligible. I mean, you're talking two two hundred thousand dollars that we put towards paving, right. traditionally. Right. You know, so okay, so we gained two hundred thousand dollars. That's not a lot to gain, really, when you're looking at a multi-million dollar capital project. Yeah. No. I mean, and again, the budget. You know. Um, but when we bonded you know, for the two point six million, the, the debt service on this is going to come out of a fund. So. But when we bonded for the two point six for the roads for two years, right? which is what we went forward with. Did we assume any chip money in that? Probably not. No, we didn't. No. So the, the point of the matter is that it's going to come out of a different fund. Right? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, you know, we've got a surplus in B fund, so any, right. yeah. any, right. any way you can... I mean, ultimately, you've got to look at what we're going to gain on the interest rates being low versus what we're going to have to expend on additional construction costs when a two-by-four costs right. $50 yeah. or whatever and a piece of plywood costs $100. Right. You got to evaluate if it's time to build anything. Right. I mean, I could tell you my neighbors. My neighbor right. has uh, just to give you an idea. My basement costs thirty-six thousand dollars. Okay, to finish the same exact job, same contractor in my neighbor's house, same Eight. square footage, cost uh, sixty thousand. Wow. That's like yeah. some, almost it's like some crazy, X. crazy mm. increase. So I mean, we need to look at that too relative to construction. Did you uh, have to bond for that? Did I have to bond for okay. it? No, I didn't. No, you got to say. I got a, I got a very low interest rate uh, uh, right. uh, loan, and then I got nailed with the assessor last year. <laughs> Which, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry I brought that up. Because, because, I, another, uh, another discussion. because I got a building permit, unlike some people in this town. Uh, <laughs> I say you, but there are people out there. Was he talking about you? Uh, I hope not. Speaking of permits, my electrician's at my house right now under my electrical permit, so I don't want to belabor the uh, the meeting here. Yeah. But we got to look at construction costs too. I mean, the contractor told my neighbor, "Wait a few years." <laughs> That's what they're telling people. Yeah. Wait a few years. That's a you know, neighbor that wants to put in a swimming pool. Same thing. And they say, yeah. "Well, you're not even going to be able to get the chlorine to fill." Yeah. So right oh, that's the other thing. Yeah. So, you know. Uh, 
I think we need Which, to Which, by the way, our, I checked with Mike Tremper. He said our supplies are solid right now, you know, with you know, chlorine Agreed. and chloride. And well, that's good. So Thank he's God. managing yeah. pretty well with the, you know, longer term of supply. Oh, yeah, it's just going to get worse. So, so we have okay. a two point, what is it, a $2.6 million or a $1.3 million yes. bond for for paving, right? Is that for, is it the two point six? Two, two, two years. Six. Yeah. So it's one point three times two, right? Um, you know, who knows where the petroleum cost is going to be for next year for paving? That's mm -hmm. going to have an effect on that. But this would be a separate capital bond for right. for highway right. purposes. Do we have a bond right now for highway buildings or not? No. No. Okay. No. I don't think anything's been done out there. Right? No. Yeah. Oh, that, that's, so that's something we need. So we, we, we need a. Is, there, is, is, is the meeting. voting? Yeah, we should put voting this on the agenda for the next meeting. Storage building still out there. I think totally, I, I really this needs yeah, to be on there. It refers to it as that. Yeah. Oh, what's in that? Next meeting. Next meeting. Can we put a Jim? resolution together for next meeting? Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, we need to know what we're going to do. I mean, I can, you know, we can. Talk to Doug Goodfriend and get a, a uh, you know, bond resolution done. I now, think the faster we move on this, the better for us. What what type of terms do we have? Are we able to look at for for these types of projects? Is it a, a twenty year or a, a buildings? Buildings are probably twenty. Okay. Probably thirty. Most buildings are thirty years. If we do it right, and then if you lock well, three, twenty or thirty. I mean, it depends. Because I know the buildings we had at IBM are 30 plus years. It depends years, on so. the construction of the building. What if we were to bond, uh, you know, get get financing in place for, you know, whatever number of years the term is, does that lock the interest rate in at today's rate? No. It's when you borrow it? It's when you borrow it. It's when you actually float the bonds is when you lock in the rate. So we need to determine, number one, how, how much money we want to get a bond, you know, right. bond based on the priorities on the site, so. Yeah. Right. So looking at the 2.6 million for the bond for the highway, if you use a million three, take it in half, that you'll get whatever the current interest rate. The second 1.3, you don't know what that's gonna be yet because no, it's no, a future. No, no, we, we would typically, what we typically you do, it do all? is we, we do get 2.6 million, we'll spend 1.3 in this year, and then we'll spend 1.3. So that bond issuance comes in, Frederick will just, keep the money in an account, it will be segregated. Oh, so you take the cash and put it in a segregated right. account, and right. that way you did get it at that bond rate. So you get it at that bond rate, yes. But then once you borrow, you then have to, a year after that, right. you start paying the debt service. The other option is you can do what are called bond anticipation notes, which I don't know if you'd necessarily want to do in this climate. I think you're right. going to lock no, in right away. I mean, if you were in used a, to do those, but right. we, we did those lot. right. Yeah. But we did those during an economic yeah. time where we That's had right. to do those. And yeah. if you, if you, you know, I spent a lot of time reading the yeah. school district uh, uh, financing uh, process. They use bands for the buses, yeah. and they have a five-year plan uh, worked out to finance the bus purchases based on the bond approvals. Yeah which makes sense for them in those particular situations. They have 160 buses, so yep. it's, a, it's a consistent. They should have zero. Well, the point is, <laughs> <laughs> the point is. Uh, York, another, largest, another discussion. The largest school district in New York State has zero buses. I know. New York City has yeah. zero right. school buses. Well, uh, you can tell the taxpayers that. But, uh, they contract them out. <laughs> the point is, though, I've been looking at their, uh, their financing uh, pretty closely just to kind of help determine and help me understand how they do things. Uh, right. Not that I want us to be doing those same types of strategies, but there's reasons why in a $250 million uh, budget, they do things a certain way. So I, I would- mean, one of the, one of the reasons, and you know, maybe on this pro you know, typically you'll issue bans if you're not sure ultimately how much the project, of, a lot of times what you do is you come up with a number and you say, this is the outside cost of the project. And then when you do the first phases of the project, you will issue bans to get money to start the project. Right. And then you'll finalize the cost for the balance of the project. I think that's because they receive federal and state money for some of these things that they bond. That's why they, that's, that's why yeah, they that's I mean, that's the same, that's the other thing you can do here is that, you know, you can, you know, look at some of these projects. Again, once you, you issue a bond resolution for, you know, $1.2 million to do the work, you don't have to borrow $1.2 million, but that's the maximum you could borrow. And again, 
if it gets if the project gets more expensive, you go in and amend the bond resolution and you can borrow more money. But what happens is when you do you know when you're looking at, at the financing, um, you, uh, you you know you can issue bands at the beginning. Either when you don't have a uh, if there's grant money perhaps on the horizon, you issue a band, wait till the grant money comes in, everything's solidified, <laughs> then you do your final borrowing. Um, to pay off the yeah. balance. Of the I, I don't think we need to do that approach, though, because we have, we do have money. Uh, right. So, you know, bands, I, know, I remember us using bands, and I was calling right. them Band-Aids, because that's right. what we were doing uh, during 2008, 2009, when there was no right. money. Right. So uh, in this particular case, I think to, to have an actionable item, we need to look at what, a, uh, what an appropriate number would be for right. borrowing purposes, right. Right. authorize mm -hmm. uh, the this. attorney to talk to Doug Goodfriend, come up with some numbers so we can know what the cost right. of debt service is going to be uh, to move on these major projects. And these are, for folks that are just tuning in, these are major capital projects at the highway right. department that we have been talking about for a long time that need to be addressed. And if we can capitalize on low interest right. rates, we, we should to find that we balance on construction it. costs, but exactly. you know, it might be a good time to, to start this process. Yeah. Do you think you'll have that ready for the next board meeting? We, if we get a number yeah, and work can you guys do that? Crunch it. Let so, us know. Well, I mean, I don't know. So we, we got 1.3, right? So, I mean, what does that do to your, huh? your meter, I think this right? is what and he has up there. Part yeah. of the discussion was we have, like, all the site work, all the highway to do the site work. Right. right. Then, well, I mean, point, you do a bond, re do a bond resolution for 1.3. So, it's, yeah, it's, you do up to 1.3 is the way you work it. And if you don't spend it, you, you don't get charged for it. So, you can just keep moving down. Because we were trying to keep the renovations simple enough. Right. I don't know where it ended up with buildings to be able to have town forces do some of the uh, remodeling and things. But I mean, we're well, I, I know like you have 5,000 to move the shed. Mike's moving it next week. Well, that's what I'm he said it'll be out of the way yeah. starting next week. So, so and that's 5,000 dollars. Right but if you could get that all together for us or whatever, yeah, it's all right here. No. For for just uh, uh, of course, you know, the garage is not on the 75 point list. You know. <laughs> for Steve. So, well, we can use. I'll tell you what. Why don't we add it, it to a system? We can take it off. Building no, building. no, I, I agree. I, I think. Yeah. We, so, we so just yeah. email it to me, okay. and I'll get it over to Doug Good Friends. Because right. the the, the limits on bonding is based on what the building really needs to be done. Yep. So. Very good. I know gonna add. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So, so can I just say one last thing, please? And this is to take. This will take. Less than two minutes. Um, so again, all I want to do is I just want to thank a number of, of people here. Um, I know we talked about the Challenger field, but we'd like to thank some of the folks over at the Robinson Lane Complex. And I mean, they, you got, they do the fields, and they coach, they volunteer their time, they make the Little League program a success. So uh, just a shout out to uh, Jeff Tomlin, Jamie and Jamie, Jim and Jamie Lamondo, Harvey Passes, Gary Hosmer, and uh, Dino um, Lorenzini. So again, Thank them for all their work that they do out there for us. Uh, again, we just signed a little league contract. Uh, I think actually at the last board meeting, Dick signed it. So again, uh, thanks to the board for all their cooperation and help on that matter. And uh, we look forward to a successful 2021 season for Little League Baseball. Thank you. Also, thank Bettina and her father. Uh, I got them earlier, but we'll thank, uh, thank Mike, them, Mike and Bettina Rochetti as well for all their work on the Challenger field. And Jessica, of course, yep. too, for, for helping us out as well. So thank yep. you. That was it. Okay. Any further business? Do I have a motion? I we'll thank everybody for making yeah. time thank to do you. this yeah. workshop. Yes. I think, it was okay. I think we should look at we should look at know. doing workshops again now that COVID is just about over. Um, coming, you know, I don't know if it needs to be a Saturday morning on a beautiful day, the best day we've had so far this year. But uh, <laughs> yeah, and our <laughs> cell phones really need to But uh, I, I like the approach. We can focus on certain things. I'm not going to. Hold us here any longer, move to adjourn. <laughs> okay, motion second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Mazer abstention. Thank you. Thank you. See you. See you.